In this video, we will discuss point clouds. Specifically, we'll learn about what point clouds are. Then, we'll learn how to read, load and visualize them using MATLAB. We'll also see how to pre-process the data by downsampling and denoising. Then, we'll see how we can apply affine transforms like translation and rotation. Next, we'll learn how to fit 3D point clouds to geometric shapes. And finally, we'll see how to extract region of interest from an image using point clouds. A point cloud is a large collection of points that usually define a coordinate system like the XYZ coordinates to represent the external surface of an object like this teapot. 3D point clouds are created by 3D scanners or sensors such as LiDAR, stereo cameras, Kinect, etc. that capture depth and color information from real-world scenes to create 3D representation of physical world surfaces. The coordinates can usually be used to represent world units, for example meters, and then be used for measurements. The three-dimensional data from 3D scanners is stored in the polygon or ply file format. This is also known as the Stanford triangle format. Each vertex or point is stored as an individual line in the ply file. For the example of the teapot, there are 41,472 vertices or data points stored in the ply file. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can read in ply files. Just like IM read is used to read in image files, PC read reads a point cloud from a ply file. This creates a point cloud object called PT cloud in the workspace. Let's look at some of the properties of this object that are of interest to us. The location property contains all the X, Y and Z coordinates from the ply file. Count shows how many vertices or data points are stored and X limits, Y limits and Z limits show the range of coordinates along each axis. Next, let's visualize the point cloud in MATLAB. Again, similar to IM show, we can use the PC show command to view it. The default orientation for visualizing point clouds is set to the Z axis upward. If this is not the case, we might prefer to set a different axis as upward using the vertical axis and vertical axis direction properties. For example, if we wanted to set the positive y axis as being downward, we would use this syntax right here. There is one more way of viewing point cloud objects. This is similar to using the vision.deployable video player system object and its step method to view video frames. To view point cloud objects, we can use PC player and its view method. We first create the player by using the function PC player which needs the x, y, and z limits of the point cloud object. We can then visualize the point cloud by using the view method. Let's take a look at the script view point cloud. This script first loads the mat file containing the point cloud object. We could have also used the pc read command to read in the point cloud directly from the ply file. Both options are valid. The script then uses the pc show and pc player to visualize it while using TikTok to see how long each method takes. Let's run the script. As we can see, PC player is about 100 times faster than PC show. To understand why that is, let's first check how much data is actually stored in the PT cloud. This is about 0.5 gigabytes of data, which is a lot. PC show uses all of these data points to show the object and hence takes about 500 milliseconds to show the figure. PC player on the other hand is meant to visualize streaming 3D point cloud data. So to improve performance, PC player automatically downsamples the rendered point cloud during interaction with the figure. The downsampling occurs only for rendering the point cloud and does not affect the saved points. Moreover, PC player also uses fixed axis size, which speeds things up. So it looks like we need to do some data pre-processing before working with point clouds. Let's go back to the presentation and do a quick recap before moving on to data pre-processing. So far, we have seen how we can bring point clouds into MATLAB. We can either bring in a previously saved mat file or use PC read to read in a ply file. Once we are done processing the data, we can choose to save it as a mat file or use PC write to create another ply format file. We also saw the different ways of viewing point clouds by using PC show and PC player. Next, we'll talk about the different kinds of data pre-processing we can do with point clouds. A very important one is to learn how to downsample point clouds. As we just saw, the data contained in a point cloud is usually measured in gigabytes. When there are not enough resources to perform computations with the current point cloud, it is very useful to downsample it. This can be performed with the PC downsample function. There are three methods to use when downsampling. Random, 
This preserves only a random percentage of points from the original point cloud. Box grid or grid average. This breaks the whole data into several uniform sized 3D box grids and merges all points within a box to a single point at the center. By doing this, it preserves the shape of the point cloud better than the random downsample method. Non-uniform box grid or non-uniform grid sample. This also uses a 3D box grid, but this one tries to create boxes with an equal number of points in each. This method preserves the relative density of points the best out of all three, and the 3D boxes are non-uniform. Another kind of pre-processing commonly utilized is denoising point clouds. This is done using the PC denoise function. It has a num neighbors property where given a number of data points, you can specify the number of neighbors used to estimate the mean of the average distance to neighbors of all points. We can increase this number to improve the robustness of the noise of the filter, but this increases the number of computations. There is another property called the threshold. Since we know the average distance of all points to their k nearest neighbors, we can set a threshold. A point is considered to be an outlier if the average distance to its k nearest neighbors is above the specified threshold. We can tighten this threshold to remove noise as well. Let's go back to MATLAB to try out these pre-processing methods. Let's open up the skeleton script downsample point cloud. This file already loads the point cloud object and visualizes it. The title function is using num to string to show how many data points the point cloud has to show the effects of downsampling. Let's first use the random method, which returns a downsample point cloud with random sampling and without replacement. When the method is set to random, we need to input a fraction parameter. This specified what fraction of data points it should preserve from the original. So in this case, we want only one tenth of the data points in the output. Then we call the PC downsample method with the random option. Let's copy the lines from above for visualization and modify them as necessary. Let's run the script and look at the output. The random method is the least computationally expensive of the three because it randomly selects 90% of the data points and removes them. If you were to run the script again and again, the results would look different every time. The other two methods use a 3D box to determine which points to remove. The grid average or uniform box grid method tries to create equal spacing between points. The user specifies the grid step size, which is the size of the 3D box, and calls the PC downsample method with the grid average input. Again, let's copy the lines from above for visualization and make the appropriate changes. Let's run the script and look at the output. This method merges all points within a box to a single point at the center. By doing this, it preserves the shape of the point cloud better than the random downsample method. Finally, the non-uniform box grid method tries to create boxes with an equal number of points in each. The user specifies the maximum number of points in a box grid and calls the PC downsample method with the non-uniform grid sample input. Let's copy the visualization lines one last time and modify them as needed. Again, let's run the script and look at the output. This method preserves the relative density of points the best out of all three. Let's apply TikTok to all three methods. As expected, the random method is the fastest, but the results will change randomly every time the script is run. The uniform grid average takes slightly longer, but preserves the shape better than random. The non-uniform method takes longest, but preserves the relative density of points the best. All three of them, however, are very good at downsampling the data. Next, let's look at denoising and open up the script denoise point cloud. This script loads the original clean teapot and a noisy version of it. Note a bigger marker size is being used with PC Show for easier visualization of the noisy data points. Let's run the script to visualize the noisy point cloud. To denoise this point cloud, we can use the PC denoise function. And then we can copy and modify the visualization portion of the script. Let's run the script again. We can see that the PC denoise function was able to do a pretty good job of removing the noise. However, this result could be improved by customizing one of the properties of PC denoise called num neighbors. This value is used to estimate the mean of the average distance to neighbors of all points. Decreasing this value makes the filter more sensitive to noise. Increasing this value makes it more robust but increases the number of computations. The default number of neighbors used is 4. Let's increase the value to 8 to see the difference in results and also add a TikTok to look at the computation time. Let's run this. 
Now let's change it back to 4 and rerun. The computation time decreases by 100 milliseconds, but the results get worse. Let's reduce it further to 2. The computation time decreases, but the denoising performance has deteriorated further. At this point, 8 seems to give us the best result of the 3. However, the computation time is not ideal. To reduce the computation time, we can use another property, the outlier threshold. As mentioned earlier, a point is considered to be an outlier if the mean distance to its k nearest neighbors is above the specified threshold. The default threshold is one standard deviation. So we can tighten the threshold to 0.3 and reduce the number of neighbors to improve results and reduce computation time. However, we need to keep in mind that by tightening the outlier threshold, valid data points could be getting rejected as noise. Now that we have loaded and pre-processed our data, we can start working with them, which takes us to our next section, ability to transform point clouds. Let's go back to the presentation to discuss this in more detail. Often, we obtain point clouds which need to be transformed in some way. They may need to be rotated along an axis or translated along another. The function PC transform can perform any affine transformation, such as a translation or rotation, defined by T form. The transform T form is specified by an affine 3D object, where A is a valid 4x4 affine transformation matrix. Here are a few potential forms for a 4x4 affine transformation matrix. The fourth column is always the same in all cases. To translate along one of the axes, we need to change these values in the last row. To scale, we need to change these values along the diagonal. To add a shear or skew, we choose one of these options. And to rotate a point cloud by an angle of A along an axis, we choose one of these options. Let's go back to MATLAB and try out some of these transforms. Let's open the skeleton script transform point cloud. This loads a mat file containing several point cloud objects, extracts the first one and displays it. The axes represent the number of meters in real life. Let's say we would like to translate the point cloud by 3 meters along the z-axis. To do this, we first need to create a 4x4 affine transformation matrix. Since we would like to translate the point cloud by 3 meters along the z-axis, the last row needs to be 0, 0, 003 in this case. PC transform needs an affine 3D object as input to specify the transform. Now we can use PC transform. Let's copy the lines from above and modify them to visualize the translation. Let's run the script. Note that the z-limits have shifted by 3. For easier visualization, we can set the z-limits to 1 to 10 for both the original and translated point clouds. Let's run the script again. Next, we can try to rotate the point cloud along the x-axis. We first need to specify the angle of rotation. Then we create the 4x4 affine transformation matrix for rotation along x-axis. Since the rest of the steps are the same as above, we can copy the rest of the code from the section above and simply change the name of the output variable. Let's run this script to view the results. So we can see that just by modifying the 4x4 affine transformation matrix, we can transform the point cloud as desired. Another fundamental concept with point clouds is point cloud registration. It is the process of aligning various 3D point cloud data views into a complete model by finding out what transformation to do to them to align them. We won't be exploring point cloud registration as this is beyond the scope of this video, but we have a very detailed example in our documentation that uses PC transform and registration to stitch point clouds. Let's go back to the presentation to discuss the next topic for this video, how to fit 3D point clouds into geometric shapes. In MATLAB, given a 3D point cloud, we can use various forms of PC fit to fit point clouds into different geometric shapes. For example, we can use PC fit plane to extract the ground plane from the original point cloud. Or we can use PC fit spear or PC fit cylinder to extract spherical or cylindrical objects from it. This functionality is really useful if we want to extract specific items from the scene and want to filter out the rest. For example, detecting objects like targets, localization markers, etc. Alternately, we may want to just keep one background plane and remove all other items from the scene. For example, finding a large ground plane for an autonomous aircraft to land. 
all three functions have a pretty similar syntax, so let's concentrate on PC fit plane in this video. Please refer to the documentation for the other two functions. One of the inputs PC fit plane takes is the original point cloud. We'll discuss the other inputs in a few minutes. It gives three outputs. The first one is the geometric model of the shape we are trying to fit to. In this case, it's a plane. It also provides the inlier indices, which are the indices in the original point cloud corresponding to the ground plane we are interested in. Additionally, it also provides all the outlier indices, basically all other indices in the original point cloud outside our area of interest. These inlier and outlier indices prove very handy in removing unnecessary objects from images. 3D point clouds usually have a color property which contains the original image they were created from. Using the outlier indices, we can create a binary mask where all the outliers show up as one or true. We can then apply the mask on the original image to get an image which only contains the area of interest, the desk in this case. Let's go try this out in MATLAB. Open the skeleton script, fit point cloud. This script loads and displays the point cloud we have seen in the last couple of slides. Recall that the PC fit plane function takes more inputs along with the original point cloud. One of them is the maximum distance allowed from an inlier point to the plane. This distance should be specified in units that are consistent with the units we are using for the point cloud, meters in this case. Let's arbitrarily set the value to 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters. Next, we need to set up a reference vector which should be perpendicular to the ground plane we are trying to fit. We are trying to fit the desk, which is the xy plane. So the reference vector is the z-axis in our case. Finally, we have to specify the maximum angular distance allowed between the normal vector of the fitted plane and the reference vector. We would like these vectors to be as closely aligned as possible. So let's set it to something small, like 5 degrees. Now that we have set up all the input parameters, let's extract the ground plane using PC fit plane. This gives three outputs, the geometric model, the inlier indices, and the outlier indices, and takes four inputs, the original point cloud object, the maximum distance from inlier point to the plane, the reference vector, and the maximum angular distance. The select function returns a point cloud object containing only the points in inlier index, and we can view the extracted plane using PC show. We can do the same thing to view the remaining point cloud, but this time use the outlier index. Let's run what we have so far. We can see that the extracted ground plane has half of the cylindrical object and the telephone, which is not good. This is because we set the maximum distance from inlier point to plane to 10 cm arbitrarily. Let's set it to something smaller, like 5 cm, and run it again. The results do improve, but it could be improved further. Let's set it to 2 cm and run it again. This looks much better. Next, let's extract the image from the point cloud. As mentioned earlier, the point cloud object has a color property which contains the RGB values of the original image. Let's extract it and assign it to the variable i. We can view it using imshow. Let's run this section. Then we need to create the binary mask we will use to extract the ground plane from the original image. For this, we need the dimensions of the image, which we can get by using the size function. Now we can create the binary mask as a matrix the same size as the image. We first set everything to false, and then we can change the outlier points to true. Let's use I am show to view the mask, and run this section. The final step is to use the mask on the original image. However, the mask needs to be applied on all three RGB layers of the image and so it needs to be replicated three times. We can do this using the repmat function. Then we use logical indexing to set every point where the mask is 1 to 0 in the image. This sets all the outlier points to 0 in the original image. We can again view the extracted image using I am show and run this section. Here we can see only the desk has been successfully extracted from the image. Now that we have covered all the topics for this video, let's go back to the presentation to do a final recap. In summary, we learnt about what point clouds are, how to bring them and visualize them in MATLAB, how to pre-process them by downsampling and denoising. We saw how we can apply 3D affine transforms like rotation and translation on them, and finally, how to fit them into geometric shapes and extract region of interest from images. This concludes this video.